What's up everybody? It's Monster Chappie. We're here for some more mud action and in today's video we got a nice double header for you. This is oh give me that pick. Let's go. Way to start off the game. But um this video guys, we actually have a double header. This is against uh Java. I forget the rest of the name, but it's uh the dude on the top 10 on the Xbox one side and this is actually the second and third game we played. The first game I think I ended up getting blown out. I can't really remember, but it was ugly, and uh, we just we just had to get our revenge somewhat. Now, uh, defensively, he uh, pretty much sent some pretty decent blitzes um, through the B gap. A lot of B gap. Uh, this was when I had one of the first times I had played a three three five. I think that's what he was running, or something similar to it. Anyways, with that being said, we kind of figured it out a little bit and started having some success. But these are definitely going to be two very very classic games that are going to come down to the wire. Uh, as we're running the ball up the middle here with my main man Demarco Murray, who is still one of the best running backs in the game. I think after boss lynch who is the best running back in the game and then bo jackson i think i would take demarco right after those uh two halfbacks right there over barry sanders over walter payton over any of the 97s or 98 cards that are in the game but with that said let's go ahead and dive into this gameplay guys we force them to a fourth down we drop a pick, but it's fourth down, so it doesn't matter. Sometimes you got to be smart with that. Uh, on fourth downs, instead of going for the eint, especially if they throw it deep down the field, a lot of the times you're going to be better off just swatting the ball, especially if it's a 30-plus yard pass attempt, then you definitely got to make that happen. And right here, this dude just lived off of this verticals play, man. This play is so borderline glitchy. Like, it's not hard to stop. But it's just very annoying because of the stupid middle uh, vertical route. It just causes so many problems for the defense. It just causes so many zones to like bug out and go crazy and they just get beat deep. Uh, or you can even face catch it. So a very annoying route to stop. And then once he got in the end zone, oh my gosh, can you believe that pass I just made? You got to be kidding me. Right here is maybe my worst end of the first half performance all year long uh we throw a pick there and as you can see once he gets into the red zone he pretty much is just going to go ahead and uh do a nice little spec catch with the uh pa um i forget the dog on name of the play fork and he just goes to that guy across the middle or he goes to the tight end uh, so we kind of picked up on that as you can see we throw another interception like i said this is my worst ending to a first half ever we throw a pick, and then we throw another pick, and we gave up 10 points, and talk about a swing in momentum. We really could have had possession and control of this ball game. We shrug off a sack right there. We get pretty lucky, and of course, we find my man Thomas across the middle there, still sending that same heat at us, and uh, still getting some pressure on the QB himself, so he's doing a good job defensively of doing that, and then offensively, I mean, he's just working that verticals play and uh, mixing in a couple runs here and there. And then, of course, the PA fork as we miss a field goal. And look at this, man. That's why you can't get sacked when you're around that 30 to 40 yard range because, you know, you get sacked and you end up out of field goal range. Um, speaking of field goals, I did end up picking up Sebastian Janikowski yesterday. A uh, really nice pickup for the team. That 100 kick power versus uh, Blanda's 97 should give us you know three to about six yards of extra range well let's just say like four to six yards of extra range uh, on any given kick so you know I'm very excited about that that really does extend your range of scoring and uh, pretty much right when you cross the midfield line the 50 yard line you have a, a decent shot at actually getting some points on the board so that's really big right here we're down 10 we got to make something happen we find Gronkowski and go ahead and use or catch that next play though again sending that same b gap all game long don't know why we weren't picking it up as well uh the the slide protection on this game definitely needs some improvement for next year i complain about it all the time especially when i go against three or four man uh low b gaps or a gaps but he forces it up to the play that he's been living it off living off of for a while and we do end up getting an interception with 94 sherman who i recently got rid of but i will show you guys that in the roster update and then we go with a nice little face catch or spec catch or there was a little bit of something over there uh but vincent jackson flashback is really awesome and he's able to uh you know get us that touchdown to tie the ball game up and now at this point what we want to do is just kill the rest of this clock 
get a touchdown. And uh, nope, we're going to stop. We're going to go ahead and kill the rest of the clock. We're going to knee it out and take three and get our for sure victory. Had I scored there, he would have been left with about a minute on the clock. And, uh, you know, with that verticals play, that's always very dangerous. So I didn't want to take that risk. And uh, we just pretty much, you know, took advantage of the clock, how much time was left, and the fact that he had no timeouts. Once again, forcing it up to the verticals route. And, oh, baby, look at Antonio Cromartie coming down with the huge interception for us to start off this ball game. And then we find Vincent Jackson to get us out of the danger zone. I call it the danger zone because especially when somebody's sending blitzes at you, you have a good chance of getting a safety when you're inside that five-yard line or any kind of block shed. Just so many things could happen. And there's a lot of pressure for you to get out of that area of the field. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself, uh, you know, giving them two points and possession of the ball, which is huge because that just changes everything. <laughs> oh, buddy, look at DeMarco Murray breaking off tackles, getting up that first down. As you can see, we're running the ball quite a bit right now. I actually have a new philosophy when running the ball. Um, that I had not implemented at this point in time during this game because it was played a little while ago. But I now run a two to three back system. Before I was kind of running a one and a half back system. And I feel like, you know, your dudes get tired and they fumble a bit more. So now I run a two, probably two and a half back system now. It's borderline three as he gets a nice little um, spec catch animation there or face catch or something, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the end zone with the tight end. So definitely something we'll be looking out for in the future there on that PA fork. And maybe something we can use ourselves. Sometimes, you know, you can pick up little things that your opponent does that you can figure out how to do and add it to your own game. You don't want to just run their scheme, of course. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get boring and stale. Uh, as we try to end the half epically bad, we do end up getting a user pick to end it. And, uh, you know, instead of being in a terrible situation, now we're only in a, a somewhat tricky situation. So it's pretty much like we never scored. We do get ball to start the second half, though. And like I was saying, you can pick up on things that your opponent does well and figure out how to do those things and figure out how to stop those things. You know, if somebody's face catching, learn how to face catch and also learn how to slow it down at least. I mean, if you're going to play future opponents, there's going to be other people that know how to do that. The other people that know how to face catch. There's other people that know how to do spectacular catch animations. There's a ton of people that run bunch tight end and there's a ton of people that run that verticals play uh, because of how glitchy it is. So, those are all things you just need to learn how to stop, you need to learn how to deal with, and you need to learn how to do for yourself because, you know, once in a while you might be able to sneak it in. You know, it might not only be once a game or something, but you maybe could sneak in that play against an opponent who isn't expecting it because it's not a part of your main scheme. So these are things you can always be looking for to improve your game and uh, just always be on the lookout for new things, little, little creative ideas. I know one year, I think it was Madden 13, I played some dude in a ranked game, and he just threw out routes from his halfback and fullback spot out of, like, split close. And I was like, what the heck? Do these routes really work like that? And I tried it for myself, and it worked pretty good. So, you know, I added that to my scheme, and the scheme got a little bit more effective. Was it a crazy difference? No, but it was something that I could pick up three to five yards here and there. And once again, we're able to kill the rest of the clock and get the W with that late clutch stop i guess it <laughs> wasn't clutch maybe it was more mad luck but either way guys i'm very happy with the victories and we do end up coming out on top winning the series 2-1 so that's gonna do it hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and gameplay till the next time we go